Y'all, strap in. This one's gonna be a doozy. Good day to all of you and welcome back to the Shire Shed. I'm Sonny. You're the audience. I've got a good one for you today. Brand new to me, never had it before. As you can tell, it's a first impression. And I have had this one kind of on and off my radar for, for a little while now. I don't know exactly how long, but... It's been one that I've kind of been back and forth, like, ah, am I going to like that? Am I not? It's, uh, it's definitely something that I know that I would like most of it. It's the other stuff that I might not. So, anyway, I'm going to be reviewing Cornell and Deal's Redburn today. It's not one that I see, uh talked about at all actually I don't think I've seen anyone comment about it or even have good or bad to say about it I, I'm not entirely sure why uh, looking at the components of it it looks and sounds really really good uh, you know minus the, the things that I was talking about but uh, before I get into that this video is going to include one hell of a rant that I think some of you might be able to relate to, and if not, you'll at least be able to understand. So, yeah, like I said, strap in. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, I have a Morgan Bones sitting barrel, I think is what this one was called. Uh, packed full of Redburn from Cornell and Deal. And uh, this apparently is some kind of unicorn of a pipe. Uh, I didn't see too many that picked this one up. And every time I do a post with it on, you know, any of the pipe groups or whatever, I uh, I always inevitably get just a ton of comments like, Oh, dang. I really wanted to get that one, and oh man, can I buy that off Eaton now? I like it. Uh, I hardly ever smoke it, but when I do, I enjoy it. So, no, you ain't getting this. So, Redburn, Cornell and Deal, Bone Sit and Barrel. Let's go ahead and, uh, and dive in. Uh, yeah, let's go. All right, and we're rolling. Uh, first, first thought, um, kind of to me seems like a burly masterpiece. Wow. Uh, give you a little insight on what this blend is. It's red, or I'm sorry, dark and white burlies. Red Virginia's Dark Fired Kentucky with a molasses and I think brown sugar topping. No, dark rum. Um, wow. Getting a lot of the white burley. Lots of smoke. Really, really good. Uh, Yeah. Zero bite. Nothing. Uh, I don't know the age on this one. Uh, this one was actually sent to me by one of you. Uh, JB 
I believe I mentioned you in um, my video from last week or maybe the week before. I can't remember. But uh, thank you again. <clears throat> um, I'm really enjoying this one so far. It's pretty straightforward, to be honest. It's certainly not a bad thing. This stuff is quite good. It's, uh, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's not completely one-dimensional. But I really, I'm really enjoying it. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, tobacco reviews portion. Cornell and Deal Redburn. Beginning with healthy portions of white and dark burley, blended with red and bright Virginia leaf. C&D's Redburn then incorporates a touch of spicy, dark-fired Kentucky, topping it with the flavors of dark rum and molasses, and pressing it into an old-fashioned crumble cake. It's part of the Melville at Sea series, which I'm not super familiar with. Uh, it is burley-based. Contents are burley, Kentucky, and Virginia. Flavoring is molasses and rum. It is a crumble cake. It comes in a 2-ounce tin, 8-ounce tin, or 16-ounce bulk. Country of origin is the United States, and it is currently available. Uh, strength is medium. Flavoring is mild. Room note is pleasant to tolerable. And the taste is medium. I'm honestly really enjoying this. It had this really nice, like, tart smell, scent, uh, that I almost thought was Orientals, to be honest. But, uh, getting a lot of the burly flavor, so if you are a burly fan... You would really dig this one. It's almost almost like they took Haunted Bookshop, took the Perique out of that, added Dark Fired Kentucky, and then a rum and molasses topping. Because I think that a lot of people that don't like Haunted Bookshop Maybe don't like it because of the Perique and not because of the Burleys. Just a theory. Uh, I could be and quite probably am completely off. But for the Burley lover, such as myself... I wouldn't say this is like a home run. It's not the best burly blend I've ever had, but it's certainly good. No doubt about that. It's uh Yeah. It's good. Uh scale one to ten. I'd give it a solid six and a half. So, Redburn, Cornell and Deal. Not too shabby. So let me get into this tale that I need to tell you guys. Today's review was actually going to be the new release of San Sepulcro. No. When news of the new San Sepulcro released, indicating what would be in it, I decided to pass because it had black Cavendish in it, or just stoved Cavendish, maybe. At any rate, most blends that have Cavendish in it, I could do without the Cavendish. Uh, it sometimes for me it takes away from my enjoyment 
of whatever the blend is. So when I saw that there was going to be Cavendish in the new San Sepulcro, when there wasn't any Cavendish in the 2021 release, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to pass on this one. I don't, I'm not one of those guys that just jumps on the small batch train and is like, holy shit, I've got to have it. It says small batch. Oh my God. I'm not that guy. I'm going to look into it and see what's in it and see what the chances of me even enjoying the damn thing are going to be. So if there's a component in there that I'm like meh about, I have no problem passing. And I know there are a lot of people that have uh, small batch, what is it, small batch uh, <laughs> fatigue with all the new limited and small batch this and limited that. and I know there are a lot of people that have that and I do probably have it to a degree myself. At any rate, when I saw that there was going to be Cavendish, I decided to pass. Well, uh, one of my good friends, um, who I have mentioned on this channel before, Thaddeus Starbuckle, uh, messaged myself and uh, Mike Howell from Naps, messaged us and said, fellas, you got to try this new San Sepulcro if you can. It's really good. And... If it were anybody else, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, cool, I might do that. It's Ryan. He and I have pretty similar tastes for the most part. I'd say 99% of the blends that Thaddeus and I enjoy, we enjoy for the same reasons. So when he said that, I was like, well, shit, all right, well, let me see if I can track some down. I knew damn well I wasn't going to be able to get it online, and I, I searched anyway, no luck, of course, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll message my, my guy at my local uh, B&M, and I said, hey, do you, did you guys end up getting any of this in? I, I'm... I'm willing to buy, you know, however many you're willing to sell me. And uh, he said, yeah, we got it in. We got it in. And this was just two days ago. I said, okay, I'll be in in the morning uh, to grab a tin of it. Well, he was off the next day when I went in. Um, had one of the guys from the... that One of the other guys that was working there had him grab me a tin from behind the counter this is where it gets dumb okay the owner of this particular shop refuses to sell any of the small batch stuff that drops anything that says limited anything that says small batch on it he immediately goes into oh we gotta we gotta hang on to that we gotta hang on to that forever he won't sell it. A business owner doesn't want to make money. Which doesn't really surprise me. 99% of the clientele that he is targeting to sell to are cigar smokers. It kind of pisses me off. So, anyway, I get up to the counter. Since it was in the back behind the counter where they keep their tobacco, I get up to the counter to pay. They scan a, a tin, and, of course, it didn't come up because they didn't put it in the system, even though they just got it earlier in the week. He had zero intent. Of putting this in the system at all. So a different person was attempting to ring me up 
the owner comes over, sees that this particular employee was having a hard time getting this scanned. Takes the tin, looks at it, and he goes, where'd you get this? I was like, I had him grab it for me. You guys got it in. Uh, I assumed that you maybe wanted to sell it since, you know, you're a purveyor of tobacco. And this is tobacco. This isn't for sale. Not for sale. So you get in a product that you think is gold of some kind and you don't want to sell it. I said, that's a shit business plan. He said, well, I'm not going to argue with you. I said, well, I'm not arguing either. Arguments typically involve opinions. I'm stating a fact. This is a shit business plan. You are not wanting to sell product that will move. Why? Well, I'm, I don't need to tell you that. Now, he did say he would hang on to a tin for me. Can't say I believe that he will, necessarily. He might. Uh, we'll see. Now, this whole interaction is kind of the last straw. He's done this with blends before. He did it with Carolina Red Flake from 2022. He did it with uh, Carolina Red Flake with Perique that just released this last year. He did it with Jolly Old St. Nick. He's done it with I mean, virtually every small batch that has come out since I've moved back to Ohio, he just hangs on to it. And he won't sell it. Claims that he uses it to entice people to come to their pipe clubs. I get that to a point. But at the same time, just unload your product, man. When it drops, people are going to want it. I'm not going to go to a pipe club just for a small batch. A chance to buy a small batch. There are other reasons I won't go. And it's because the place... Well, I won't get into that because that's... Verging on personal. Long story short, that whole interaction just pissed me off. I'm still in disbelief that a business owner would not want to, number one, hype up something like that, get more customers in the door. When a new small batch is getting ready to drop and a local brick and mortar is going to have it, especially in this economical climate that we are experiencing where you should be doing damn near everything to sell product that you pay for. He's just not. <laughs> it's baffling. Absolutely baffling. So it has inspired me. Because as I said... He has been doing this for quite some time. And uh, his, his target demographic is very clearly and very obviously cigar smokers, which is fine. But he all but ignores pipe smokers. So, it made me want to start my own pipe and tobacco shop. No cigars. He has plenty. He can keep that demographic. I want to start my own pipe and pipe tobacco shop. Only that. If he's going to ignore that demographic and just focus on cigar smokers, that's fine. 
he can have that demographic. I want to start my own pipe shop and take his what little pipe demographic he has for myself. Now, whether or not that is feasible, I don't know. But, I know that I'm pretty pissed. And, honestly, it's... This inspiration isn't from me being pissed. I've been thinking about this for a while. Uh, it irks me to no end that in this area what options we do have for pipes and pipe tobacco is limited as it is. But, uh, I'm going to have to fuss with that. He is essentially just shitting on pipe smokers even more by not selling. I want to support my local businesses, but he's literally not letting me. So what I did instead was I called my old faithful pipe shop in Albuquerque and they got my money instead. A business out of state got my money instead. Some people, I tell you. So what I want to know from you guys is I know I'd be opening up a can of worms in terms of starting a business. I know certain people. I know how to get things done. But there are certain things that I do not know how to get done. And I guess what I'm wanting is some opinions. What do you think? What would I have to do specifically to, you know, other than getting a storefront, getting inventory, putting a business plan together, funding to get that inventory paid for, all that crap. Other than that, what are, what are the small details that most people don't usually, if ever, think about? What are they? And what kind of hoops am I going to jump have to jump through, financial or otherwise, to do this. Because I would want partners, at least one to two managing partners. I don't really want a financial partner, because typically those kind of people, they just get on the power trip and say, well, I'm funding this project, so you're going to do what I say, or I'm pulling my money. Ideally, I'd like to get a business loan, to cover the cost of permitting and, and inventory and product and all that stuff. I don't necessarily have to have a smoking lounge in this place. It would be cool, but I know that's going to be super difficult to do because everybody thinks that smoking is icky and gross and bad for you. Whatever. Anyway, that's my thought, among other thoughts. <laughs> I, more than anything else, think this area, and every area for that matter, that doesn't have a good, comfortable business to go to, to procure pipes, tobacco, and the associated accoutrement that goes along with that hobby, this hobby that we love so much. I think every area deserves something like that. And if I have to be the one to do it, I'll freaking do it. I don't care. Anyway, that's my, my spiel today. I know you guys love story time with Sonny. And it's been a while since I shared a story that got me either riled up or self-deprecating in some kind of way. That's my thought. Please let me know in the comments 
what you think. I know it's going to differ from state to state, but I'm just looking for general, general information here. Something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. And I can't, I can't believe that it's gone on this long. Because I swear to God, it looks like he just moved into that spot. Anyhow, if this is your first time watching, you know what I'm about to say. If you're liking this, throw me a like. Throw me a subscribe. If you don't like it, I don't know why you're still watching, so get out of here. But if you do like it, yeah, throw me a like and subscribe. That'll do it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Those of you that are my loyal albeit insane followers of this train wreck of a channel. Yeah. I'm a little I'm a little tuned up. A little tuned up. <laughs> so I'm going to finish this bowl of Redburn and I'm going to get on with my day. I hope you all have a great weekend. Have a great work week coming up. And always, 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 take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. If you do, don't get caught. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.